We have arrived briefly to the comfort and familiarity of the Coastal Highway Quonset. And are on our way to the Desolation Point Forge, hoping to find a bedroll along the way. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our brand new Last Misery series. So we got some coffee as we kick things off here. Oh, hey, a decent little toque. And also, of course, we found a <laughs> very useful, which is to say not, uh, rifle skill manual there. Notice now that the skill books actually tell you. Let's see if it actually shows. All right, doesn't show there, but here there's that note about how much it improves rifle firearm skill, which is pretty cool. So that's a new addition. Not that it's like changed. Oh, well, there's no obvious change to the mechanics and how much each training manual helps. I don't imagine that there actually is. Um, but at least that's indicated in the interface now, which is new and different. I don't know that it's necessary per se, but it's interesting. Speaking of things that are interesting, there is a lot of, um, how should I put this? A lot of discussion in the community right now about the Cougar. We have a poll up on the channel in the community tab right now. If you haven't voted already, check it out because we're just, you know, getting a sense for you know, how people feel about it, but also whether they've encountered it or not. Because there are a lot of strong feelings. The cougar is an animal that people have waited for for a very long time. I haven't interacted with the cougar that much. And I'm just sort of not necessarily, or really not at all in response to the community uh, kind of vibe. But I'm withholding judgment just on account of... Good, there's some tomato soup on account of wanting to give the mechanic a fair shake, but also pay a lot of attention to the broader kind of consensus and see how it develops over time. So I'm going to be withholding a lot of like my personal take and opinions for now, but definitely check that poll out if you have a moment because your voice would be appreciated. Again, it's on the community tab on the channel's front page. So there's a second heavy hammer, which is surprising. I'm just going to put this down for now and keep looking around. I'm not going to worry about that toolkit. There's some wires. Pretty decent loot table here, I have to say. Let's also go ahead and put that toque on. Yep, that's good. You can also replace the cotton scarf, so we're now warmer than we were before. All right, those shoes, I can honestly... I might harvest those for leather, so what I'll do is drop those for now. And I'll leave them in a very obvious place so I can remember to deal with them later. Let's keep looking around. Oh, nice! Okay, we've got our hacksaw. Nobody needs this that is a welcome find. So for those of you who are just jumping into the long dark and maybe the reasoning behind my push for Desolation Point and the whole inner monologue, well, it was an outer monologue, but the whole discussion that I had with myself in commentary about, like, which forge I would go to. Like, am I going to Forlorn Muskeg? Am I going to Desolation Point? Why am I going to a forge? Well, again, on interloper difficulty and misery, of course, on anything where the loot table is set to the lowest possible setting, tools don't spawn, and you have to make them yourself, which means you have to go to the forge pretty much as soon as you possibly can because until you go to the forge you don't have a knife you don't have a hatchet and you will not have one hey look 43 gallons of water uh, that conversion error is still there okay i've got to eat something i've got to eat something right now i'm pushing it let's put this away for a moment so i can actually make good food decisions now yeah, we're going to eat the low condition stuff first here just to avoid hopefully the possibility of food poisoning there are some things coming which may or may not make that a little bit dicier. <laughs> some of the other afflictions, uh, I don't think the next one's going to arrive this episode. If the if I get the timing right, it's going to be next episode or the one after that. Um, or if I'm getting the timing right, I should say. It's not like I have control over it. But in terms of the length of the episodes, that might affect which episode it pops up in. Usually there's like a week-ish 
between each affliction, but it really kind of varies. There's randomness, I think, to the timing, from what I understand, and what I've experienced in testing so far. But there's also, of course, randomness to which affliction you get. So I don't know which one's coming next. It's only the first and the last afflictions which are known. The first one being diminished form and the final one being broken body, which Raphael covered in the launch video for the update. So going to try to stay mobile and we need to find... I'm very happy that I found a hacksaw and that I've found a heavy hammer already because that's what I need if I'm going to get these tools made. So that's a huge amount of progress. We do have to drop some stuff though, because I'm carrying more than I can afford to carry. So let's take just a second to do a bit of inventory management. It's the beginning of the day here, so it's going to start getting brighter. I don't have to worry about, well, I also have to rest. Hmm. Don't love that. There's a part of me that wants to read a bit before I rest. Tell you what, let's go ahead and put some of these sewing kits away. I'm going to keep, mm, I'll keep the lower condition one on me and an extra, and then we'll do, for now, we're just going to do one whetstone because I don't have any tools to sharpen. Um, I'll keep the toolkit on me just to cause chaos in the comment section. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're going to put one of these cooking oils away. I'll keep the oats on me because having them, I think, will be handy. I mean, do I maybe need both cooking oils? Let me hold on to that for now because that's food, and I might be using that before long. And probably break most of this up, so I will. I've got a fair amount of painkillers already. I don't know that I need to drop any of those, but... Yeah, so this is interesting. Um... That's a lot of my extra encumbrance there. I don't need the Frontier Shooting Guide. I've got some cattail heads for Tinder. I want to keep some firewood on me, but like, because we have so much water all around us, I'm not as worried. All right, metal shelf. Where am I in the room? I can hardly tell. No, I didn't want to open it. Back off. Okay, cool. The bed's right behind me. <laughs> if I had just turned around, it'd be fine. Okay, so... I still don't have a can opener, that's what sucks. So, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Speaking of cooking, rather than smashing open a can of something that I definitely don't want to lose any caloric value on, let's actually open that drawer back up. We're going to grab some of this stuff out to burn it. And we'll do some cooking real quick before I go to sleep here. And that way I will get... just I'll make good use of some of the things that I'm sitting here thinking about putting away. I have one accelerant. Mm, let me go ahead and use that just to preserve my matches. Also to save a little bit of weight. We're going to put the fire log in the fire too. Save the coal because the coal could be useful. And I may as well... I don't know. See, I'm going to find plenty of coal on the way. So part of me wants to just leave this coal and then take the coal that I find on the way to Desolation Point, and that's what I'll use. Alright, let's start making some porridge. I'll we'll have some potatoes to cook. It's going to get plenty bright, but interestingly enough, I'm going to sleep through most of the day here. So this is going to be an interesting next few moments of gameplay. Okay, let's eat that. And this will also be good for cooking skill. One of the best additions from the last year's worth of updates is the expansion to the cooking. It's probably one of my favorite new things about the Long Dark. If you're returning to the Long Dark after not having played for a while, there is so much more to cooking now than there used to be. And there's even, there's so much depth to it that I still have not come even close to cooking every recipe. Um, I just haven't because they've just added so much. There are recipes that you can find. We've already found one this series. You have to find them each playthrough in order to kind of unlock them. But one of the side benefits of a bunch of new cooking options is that 
it's easier to raise cooking skill than it has been in a, well, really than ever. <laughs> because there's just so much more that you can do cooking-wise. It's really cool. Can't say enough about how much I like it. So let's go ahead and we're just going to take a little bit more time to fill up on all of this. The prep time on porridge, let's actually, I want to double check this. It's either 5 or 15 minutes. I think it's 5. Okay, so that's not going to be a good timer. Let's try this. We fast forward. Eat that porridge. Okay, so this is going to fill us completely up. Eight minutes until that's ready. Yeah, let's go ahead and put some more porridge on, but we'll time the porridge prep in a second because I need to remind myself how long it takes out of sheer curiosity, but also for the benefit of your kind of knowledge as well. Okay, so 15 minutes until ready. Let's now put another potato on the fire. Now, if we pass time until this is ready and then eat it, now let's watch. 34 minutes till ready. Prepare more porridge. We're using those oats to make the porridge. Okay, yeah. So it's like a seven minute prep time or so. Okay, so we're doing all right overall. Let's eat a little bit more. We're leaving some in our inventory here and I probably am gonna be good with this. This is enough food. I do have to do more exploration. So we'll go ahead and pick that up. Water wise, I'm completely fine. It's past time until this is ready, and just take it. Still have some time in this fire, so there's an argument to be made for not wasting it. Let's see. There we go. Now let's drink this, and then we'll still have plenty of water when we wake up. Okay. Yeah, this is where it's going to get interesting, because now I'm going to sleep for literally the entire day. The benefit of this is that I'm going to recover a ton of condition, and I'm probably going to wake up with the well-fed bonus. That would be my guess. There it is. Oh, damn, I forgot. So, <laughs> given the thirst settings that we're playing on, I can only play, or the, I really should say the, um, uh, hydration might be a better way to put it the rate at which the hydration meter kind of declines i can only sleep for 10 hours at a time if i sleep for 12 i will wake up dehydrated which is actually like when you think about it it's somewhat realistic like if you don't have water next to you when you're sleeping and you sleep the entire night if you sleep a long time you're gonna wake up like with like dry mouth and like really needing to drink so it makes sense that you'd lose like a little bit of condition in some sense especially in a survival situation um, and I like that element of high difficulty, long dark play, come to think of it. But okay, now that we have arranged all of that, let's do one last look through our inventory. There are some training manuals that I'm carrying around that I don't technically need to be carrying around. Hmm. Am I going to have time to read these though? Maybe while I'm cooking at some point. Ooh, that's right. I have those shoes that I still have broken down. Let's break those down real quick that's two pounds. All right, there's that. And now we're good to go. Notice that the stomach is already halfway empty. We filled it up almost completely prior to going to sleep. That's nice. And now we begin the process of investigating the nearby areas. And we're going to kind of keep moving, I think. I don't want to get too sedentary here. It's going to be tempting to be sedentary because we're in a reasonably safe spot. I hear an animal somewhere. Oh, wow. Wow. Everything is burned out. Everything. Oh my god, this is... This is real bad. Okay, let's grab a stick. And we're going to kind of keep moving this way-ish. Oh, that's that's a wolf. That's a wolf literally right there. I'm walking towards it. Okay, great. 
Freight. Wonderful. Love this. We are on the edge of his detection radius, and there might be another one right here. I don't like this. I don't like this. Wolves are going to be extra mean. So we're moving in the direction of Desolation Point. But there's a house potentially up here. I'm going to guess this house is burned out too. But with all the houses around the Quonset burned out, which is really surprising, but that seems to be the world that we're living in. Hang on, there's that wolf right there. Definitely managing... Oh, there's another wolf down there. Wow. Wow, I am surrounded by wolves. I hope he doesn't turn around right now, otherwise I'm going to have a problem. Yeah, it seems like the house in the very back of the Quonset might still be up, but I didn't see it. It's so cold. I just want to lay down for a minute. Okay. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Nope. Burned out. Had a feeling. Okay. Um, here's what we're going to do. Thankfully, visibility is not utterly terrible. So I can at least watch for wolves. I'm actually going to put the lantern away for just a moment. Gonna make it a little bit easier for me to just see where they are. And I might try to go ahead and cross the ice real quick here, if I can afford to. There is potentially a bear. But there are no wolves in the immediate vicinity. I can't see any. I know it might be quite dark on YouTube at the moment. Right, there's one of the fishing huts. The nice thing about... Okay, I see a wolf over there. Actually, that might not be a wolf. Oop, do we have an aurora starting? That is not good. I think that's actually a prop deer on the ice over there. Probably can't see that thanks to YouTube compression, but having the lantern put away right now... All right, the fog is clearing, probably because an aurora is starting. But I might safely be able to make it to this hut. Okay, I think I... Yep, there's the bear right in front of me. Anyway, yeah, as I've started saying a couple times now, the nice thing about having the lantern put away is that it makes seeing silhouettes of wildlife quite easy. Alright. So I know where the bear is, and I want to try and make it up to the top of the ridge here. Because I don't think it's possible <laughs> for either of the hilltop houses in Coastal Highway to be burned out. I've never seen it in all my time playing this game. They could always introduce that as a surprise, which would be particularly nasty. But for now, I'm going to trust that my existing gameplay knowledge remains correct which is that I can safely make it to the top of this hill here. And I'm actually going to try and go more or less straight up, because it looks like I can sneak behind the bear. I can't remember if I can actually go straight up this this way. I feel like this might be a downhill-only route, but I'll, I'm going to try to finagle my way up this slope. Yeah, the house is standing, so we're good. Yeah, this is going to be... Ooh, this, I don't think this is traversable. Hang on. Might be a way up if I use this rock. I kind of doubt it, though. We might be able to zigzag our way up. Hang on. Is this working? Ow. It's kind of working. I've, I don't think I've literally ever tried this before. Misery mode is a great time to experiment, isn't it? Especially while I'm losing condition due to hypothermia risk. I don't think I'm getting any higher up. Yeah, I don't think I am. That sucks. Okay, well. 
Now both ankles are sprained. I'm going to hobble around because I don't have a bandage. Didn't prepare one. That's my fault. Ow. As long as I don't run into a wolf right here, it's fine. <laughs> I knew that was not traversable. I tried it anyway. Live and learn. That is a deer, which is a good sign that there might not be a wolf too close. So we just need to make it around to the back side of the island here, and it is traversable. A couple of bunnies in front of us. Potentially some loot in the area. Oh, you're fine. Just a couple of sprains. Just, just a couple of sprains. You're fine. What's not going to be fine is if there's a friend up on top of you. There is. Rude. Incredibly rude. And I don't have a flare for this thing, so I literally can't use it. Incredibly rude. Hang on. We might have a way out of this. I have nothing to use against this wolf. Again, we're playing with the highest level wolf population settings. Oh, interesting. Did the wolf lose the line of sight? Oh, he went after a bunny. Lucky day. Please stay distracted, wolf. Please just enjoy your kill. I've never been so happy to see a bunny die. What would be hilarious is if, thanks to said wolf population settings, <laughs> there was another wolf. Which I would, I've never seen more than one wolf up here. But that was the wolf I expected to see, and it was here. Alright, we've lost a lot of condition now. That was... I'm going to go ahead and say that's probably not worth the trip, but you never know. We might find some things here that make it worthwhile. And at the very least, I will be able to find some cloth, thanks to these curtains, that I will be able to use to get some bandages. Oh, nice! A freshly cooked venison at 100% condition. That's not at all unusual. <laughs> I'm actually serious. It's not unusual in the long dark. It is hilarious that you can occasionally find, uh, like, full condition beverages, like coffees, usually in microwaves, and teas that are perfect condition. Like, when were these brewed exactly? <laughs> when were these cooked? But in some ways, it's every now and then in games, I think a certain element of gaminess is welcome. It needs to be balanced. You can't be too gamey. You can't have too much stuff that kind of breaks the immersion. But at the same time, total realism can be off-putting in some ways. Okay, so we want to go ahead and put this away for just a second. Let's break this down. That venison is honestly a lifesaver because, look at this, this is 800 calories. That's completely safe to eat. I'm also going to go ahead and drink this soda. That puts us in a much better position calorically, and I still have lots of partially eaten porridges, so I can completely top the stomach back off. Let's go ahead and yeah, I don't have any what was wild about that wolf encounter is I don't have any rocks on me at all. Um, I had the charcoal so that's why I was like going for the the gun menu to see if I could pull a rock but I don't actually have any rocks. So not that a rock would have done a lot to help me. We already have a an affliction that makes wolves less likely to respond to that kind of thing. Okay, so let's now make some bandages. And for the record, I don't need this. But 
Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make two more just in case. It's good to have those extras on me. The reason I don't need it is that I'm likely to now rest here to recover some of my condition, and the rest would take care of the sprains. It will certainly take care of the pain. But okay, now that we have taken care of that, I am starting to run low on lantern fuel, which is unfortunate. Not a lot that I can do about it. Sadly, I do still have flares. You never know, we might find more here, if we're lucky. But maybe, just maybe... Oh, nice. <laughs> See, there's a cup of herbal tea, which that's a very welcome find, actually. The cup of herbal tea will help us rest and recover condition a little bit faster. Ragged sweatshirts. Okay. Looks like lantern fuel is going to be a no-go from this house. Take some water. Put this away, and now we need to rest after we drink that tea. Also, I'm going to go ahead and eat these sardines while I can. Lower condition sardines are always a risk. All right, cup of herbal tea. It looks like, thanks to the well-fed bonus, I do have normal carrying capacity at the moment, which is nice. I'm going to put in six hours of sleep. I'm going to get about five. I always try to add a little bit of extra time so that I know that I will get the full amount of sleep that I'm looking for. So the pain has gone away, and thankfully the sun has just risen, so now we don't have to worry about lantern fuel as we look around here. Um, I don't think there's anything really left to look around for, but I will double check in the dark here. Just to make sure. Yep, already searched up here everywhere. Got the plastic container. Did I look? Oh, wait, nope. That is a granola bar hiding under the back of the couch. And that is why you double check especially when you're still rattled after a wolf encounter. Which, by the way, might be about to recur out here. But the weather at least sounds nice. What I'm really hoping for is good visibility as I leave here. Because we need to try and head for Desolation Point. Okay, let me take one more look. The nice thing about these particular... about, like, this specific lighting environment is that it's going to make the presence of certain items more obvious, and I just don't want to overlook them, so I just want to take advantage of having this lighting, because we already saw that granola bar much more easily. Okay. Now, I'm going to step out the front door. Oh, nice. Okay, so part of me is tempted to go to the other house over there, but look at this visibility. Look at this. The bear is all the way over on the road, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity. This is going to be a challenge. So here's what we have to do now. Hopefully in a moment I'll be able to see if there are any houses midway between here and the zone exit. It doesn't look like there are. Yeah, they're burned out, which is pretty normal at this difficulty. I'm going to grab this old man's beard while I'm looking at it. That way I can make some progress towards not needing that antiseptic. Okay, the challenge here is that we're going to lose some temp we're going to lose some condition due to the temperature. We might be able to find some items from beachcombing if we're lucky. I need to find some place to escape this but we need to make it to Desolation Point, and the real challenge is we still don't have a bedroll, as I mentioned at the start of the episode. So there will be the opportunity to rest, 
at one key point on the way. That's honestly not far. We might even make it there before the end of the episode, if I'm lucky. But then I have to make it a pretty good ways. It's too cold. I, think. I was honestly really hoping that we would get a lucky bedroll. I do see what looks like the house at the docks is still standing. So that looks like the one house at the Quonset that's still up. And there's a part of me that wants to go back and look before I go to Desolation Point. But at the same time, I know I need to make it to the Forge. And I know that these extra afflictions are coming. And if I don't take advantage of the time that I have, my life will be cut short here. Just to be very clear about what we're facing. This is a misery playthrough. Again, as I said in episode one, when Interloper was released, they advertised it as the mode that would feel like the game was literally trying to kill you. The community collectively over the years said, all right, bet. <laughs> and, um... Interloper is not really a mode that poses a challenge to the survival elite. It's a very challenging mode. But the best Long Dark players have mastered it. And so, Hinterland responded with misery mode. And now the game is literally trying to kill you. Because these afflictions are unique to misery. They don't exist in any other mode. And they are beyond your control, completely randomized, unpredictable, and incredibly dangerous. Incredibly dangerous. All right, hypothermia risk is already climbing. This is gonna be, this is gonna be rough. Because again, full wolf population, I'm heading into an area where I almost always run into a wolf on first try. Condition is not full. Wolf damage from struggles is probably cranked all the way to the max. So I fully expect that a wolf could kill me if a wolf got hold of me which is why that moment earlier was so scary. Serves me right for trying to <laughs> experiment with that slope, but I wanted to try. My, my curiosity got the better of me. Didn't cost me the run, thankfully, but we could run into a similar danger right here. If we're lucky, we won't. But again, wolf populations all the way up. These are stalker level wolves, but the amount of damage they do is going to be similar, actually worse, than interloper level wolves. Fun fact, the interloper wolves are actually not as strong as they can possibly be. So we have the highest level wolf population, which I believe Stalker is the highest possible. So this is the worst that we've seen it. But we've never experienced before Misery in a mainline difficulty setting what the worst wolves are like. And now we might. I'm going to see if I can make it up here. Come on. You know you want to let me through. If I can make it through here, that would be one way to at least get the high ground on these wolves. Yep. Yep. Called it. Called it. I knew that one would be right there. All right. So now I can at least kind of see him and maybe try to David Blaine my way around him. I don't know if that'll happen, but we're going to try it. Because, oh, please don't tell me you're coming right towards me. That's incredibly rude. I think he's going away from me. He's going away from me. Good. Hypothermia risk is a factor. That's not the only wolf either, so I need to also, also watch to my right. There is shelter to my left, but unfortunately I can't go left until I get... Basically I need to get to where that wolf was. Which sucks, by the way. Because the terrain has now forced me back down to its level. Ooh, I might have a shortcut here if I'm lucky. 
I might be able to use this. I've never tried. Uh, maybe? Maybe? Nope. Not gonna work. Damn it. Okay. So we might end up having to run from this wolf as we enter this house. I don't know how far away that wolf has wandered. But I don't have eyes on it at the moment, so I have no way of getting up confidently. The moment I stand up, it could bark at me in charge. So I at least want to be able to make a break. Alright, the wolf is to my left. Shelter is just beyond... I'm actually going to go for the car. Oh, the wolf is in front of me. Either that or there, too. But I think I'm good. Wrong house. Damn it, where is it? There it is. Got it. Alright. Oh, boy. Now, unfortunately, there's actually no natural bedroll here. So this is a stopping point, but it's not actually a resting point. Gives you the chance to breathe and escape. And potentially get some loot. And I thought maybe there's a possibility of finding a bedroll here, which I think there sometimes is, unless that's changed in the loot table updates. But I might be misremembering too. This is just a place that I obviously associate with rest for clear reasons. But um, what we're going to do is go ahead and let me, just because I looted that stuff, I'm going to step outside. Step back inside. Just for the save point. We'll stop this episode here. In the next one, I am going to continue my run for Desolation Point. The good news is most of the wolves here in this transition zone are, in fact, in like on this side of it. Once I can kind of get a little bit further back towards the tunnel, towards Desolation Point, I'm a little bit farther away from like the wolf threat. But there are still potentially some wolves in between me and the cave. So I'll have to continue to be careful. Um, I don't have any way of fighting them off until I have a tool of some kind. And um, until I have tools of some kind, I certainly can't make any... I, I can't, like, make a bow and arrow. Um, the only way that I could is if I used a hacksaw that I just found to take any uh, saplings that I find and make a bow and arrow. But that would take time, and I would need to be doing stuff in the meantime. So I'm still moving towards a place that could give me the tools that I need. Just a lot of risk along the way and much to do in the coming episodes before the afflictions uh, that are inevitably on the horizon arrive. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. For early episodes, channel emotes, and member badges, look for the join button. New episodes drop at 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time every day but Wednesday, and comments are always welcome. So leave your thoughts below, and I'll see you next time.